Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a brutal attacking game unleashed by the 13th world chess champion Gary Kasparov. Kasparov is on the black side and he's playing against American chess grandmaster Fabiano Caruana. This game is from 2016 St. Louis Ultimate Blitz Challenge. With this being said, now we can go through the game. Caruana opened up with knight f3, ready opening is on the board, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7. We have a symmetry, both players castled king side, but after white c4 move Kasparov answered with d6. He goes for king's Indian defense type setup, b3, e5, bishop b2, c5, e3, knight c6, nothing special, both players are hurrying to develop their pieces. And after bishop f5, already as black's light squared bishop can step on d3, Caruana pushed forward the d pawn. e4. Kasparov is getting a nice wedge on e4, and black's position looks to be like king's Indian attack, with colors reversed. As you know, there was a time when Kasparov was playing king's Indian defense. Uh, as well as a uh, king's Indian attack is also something which can be seen very often in his repertoire. And this is a setup where usually black is managing to organize a ferocious king side attack, while white is usually being laid on the queen side. Also, let me tell you that the interesting thing is that Kasparov already had this position back in 1980. That was a game which he played against Simon Webb. That game Kasparov won. He had black pieces. 91 was Caruana's answer. In that game against Simon Webb, Webb chose knight g5 continuation. In the game we see knight e1, rook e8, knight c2, h5, a standard idea in these type of positions. Queen d2, h4, and bishop a3. White is attacking black pawn on c5, but better is playing h3. And now if queen d7, then you can play g4, thus successfully locking up the king side. And this bishop sacrifice is not dangerous in the end of the day you have this f3 move. Instead, in the game we see bishop a3. Caruana decided to organize a counterplay on the queen side. Rook d1 was made with bishop g4, with which Kasparov freed the f5 square with a tempo. Rook c1, queen d7, b4, queen f5. More forces are coming. Felic like is concentrating more forces on the king side. And in return, white is seeking for a counterplay on the queen side, but already it's visible that white's counterattack is too late. Uh, d5. Knight e5. According to Stockfish, going for knight takes b4 is also something which is worth of taking into consideration. And then you can go for an exchange on g2 and play h3. If king f1, then knight g4. And again, in this case, black prevails. But in the game, Kasparov didn't hurry and instead put his knight on the central e5 square. Uh, which white instantly removed because that knight could become a huge headache for white. Rook takes e5, knight e1, meanwhile white is consolidating the king side, h takes g3, f takes g3, bishop h6. This is the start of a very interesting idea. At the same time, black is also putting pressure on e e3. Rook b1, king g7, so now can you understand what was the idea of bishop h6? Kasparov is switching his rook into the attack from the h-file. Rook b3, white is or protecting the pawn on e3. In future this can allow white to uh, free the queen, move away the queen, which currently is protecting the pawn. Queen h5. Meanwhile, Kasparov wants to make a move like knight g4. This can be one of the possible ideas, which white stopped with h3, and at the same time now white wants to go for g4. 
But after h3, Kasparov decided to switch his knight into the attack with knight h7, knight g5 maneuver, g4. And now question arises, how should black proceed? Can you find Kasparov's next move? Ready? Well, let me tell you that in this game Kasparov was not in the mood of retreating and instead of touching his queen, he decided to go for bishop takes g4, he's trading off his light squared bishop with two pawns which were serving as a nice defensive shield for white king. Queen d1, white is offering the exchange of queens but of course black is rejecting. Queen e2, there comes knight g5. King h1 unpinning the bishop, already the threat was knight h3 check and then rook h5 right or rook f5. Uh, in the game we see king h1 and this time black finally played rook h8. Black is now leaving the pawn on d6 unprotected which care won a one but in this type of positions who cares about a pawn? King g8 and now once Black plays bishop f8, there is going to be no one who can protect white king from this rook. B takes c5, bishop f8, check. King g1, knight h3, check. King f1, and bishop takes d6. Kasparov is removing the knight which was covering the f5 square. C takes d6, rook f5, check. Knight f3 and with his next move Kasparov forced a resignation. According to Stockfish e takes f3 wins faster but Kasparov chose rook takes f3 continuation which in my humble opinion looks more beautiful. In case of queen takes f3 just won that queen and if bishop takes f3 then queen g1 checkmate can appear on the board. Uh, well, this is it, dear chess lovers. Hope that you enjoyed this marvelous attacking game by Gary Kasparov. It was very strange that I didn't cover this game earlier. Finally, this game is also on my channel. If you enjoyed it, feel free to share with your friends as well. And in the end, a chess puzzle for you, where the task is to win with the black pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.